and you don't think much about it because you're like, cool, I get the day off. And But if you think about it, we've all taken those days and we got that pit in the bottom of our stomach during the course of the work day. And if you don't, you should. Because you have to understand something. There's a schedule that a company goes by. And if, you know, our, our schedule is very, very tight right now. And uh, if we're planning on, say, we're going to go to Mr. So-and-so's house and we're going to hang these fans. And at that end of the day, or hopefully we can have that job done and we can finish up this one job at Mrs. So-and-so's house. And then tomorrow we're all going to be at this other job at this one big so-and-so church and we're going to redo all the lighting. But guess what? If you don't show up, you may not think that you are valued but you are, because value is in measurement. And if you're not there, it throws the whole schedule off. I can't promise you're gonna leave here a master electrician, but if you pay attention and you remember these skills, as the moments come up that these things um, present themselves, as we've worked on today, you'll be a little bit ahead of the next guy. I'm going to show you the basic idea of how to drill out some studs basically in a residential situation when the framing is done which is what I mean by framing which means they'll put the two by fours on the walls and you'll, it won't, you won't have the pliable it'll just be an open wall and when the electricians come in and the plumbers they drill through their studs and they run their stuff and there's, there is an art to it and we're going to show you that. Just some basics. Um, these are basic standard boxes in our industry that we use for a residential situation. These are called nylon boxes. This is a 22 square, um, cubic inch box. Basically, you can put a switch or an outlet, GFI, um, in these boxes. And these are what you can, the industry uses. They use a gazillion of these. And you can see this little notch right here. And you put this notch basically right up against the stud against the wall, leave that little bit sticking out. A little bit sticking out. That little bit that's left is the width of drywall. Basically, half inch drywall is the industry standard for today because that's what everybody's using. Because we would take our tape measure, and basically, the the, basically in, the basic industry measurement for outlets are 18 inches to the center. So, which is what? 16 to the bottom. Right. What's hot I did in red? What's highlighted in red? What's highlighted in red is 16 inches, because that is the bottom of an outlet. Right. That's the industry height, right? <laughs> that's the space between studs, too. That's exactly that's, that's what the original. <laughs> yeah. It, there's a multiple, a multiple different kinds of fit, uh, tape measures. There is your basic, which you get at Home Depot Lowe's. That's actually a framer's measurements on all of those. We do, if they do make an electrician's one, it's the same thing. The color's a little bit different. It's twice the amount of money. So we're going to start with the pencil. Now, your measurements for your switches, receptacles, multiple of the things are all marked on a blueprint. <clears throat> blueprint will also say, measurement will either say like 16 AFF. AFF is at finished floor. So that means you measure up 16 inches AFF. That's, that's their center mark. Normally, they'll say 18 AFF. That means 16 in the bottom. <coughs> We'll mark at 16 inches there. And put it right to the bottom, put that right there, like that. And you can feel these when you're putting the boxes in, as long as you're and you can feel it stop. And that means you're right at that, your little lips that are on. In fact, hand this around, you guys can see the lip, so you have your standoff areas. 90% of switches are 44 to the bottom, which is 46 to center. 
every I've done multiple builders. I've done builders that had six inches AFF for the receptacles, 12 inches AFF, switches at 30 inches. The biggest one that I ran into that was something that took me a long time to get to is the ADA houses for people in wheelchairs. And actually, what's going to be a little bit lower? Your switches are going to be lower. So normally in an ADA house, you have 36 inches to the bottom for your switches. Just out of curiosity, we are 18 inches to the center. Yes. And this switch, it's usually the... No, not all. <laughs> well, depends on the build. They're normal. They're normal. We get some weird builders. Well, yeah, I know. I had to. These are their 48 inches to the center. And this is not 48 inches to the center because it's not. But it's 40. It looks like. The cubic inch of the box is rated by how many wires you can put in it. Each wire consists of 1.1, no, 1.25 per wire. So you figure in a regular Romex coming in, it's 2.25. Have hooked. I've seen a lot of devices and things electrically hooked up, and people either just get lazy or they just, for some reason, don't think they need to hook the ground up. You have to understand, electricity takes the first path to ground. And in a situation like this, in this little room here, let's just say that this was like a little house. Every outlet, every switch, everything, all the grounds tie together to one system. And all the grounds come back to one system. They come right back to the ground bar in the panel. And there's a grounding system on the outside, which is usually consists of two or three ground rods. And there's a bare wire that goes from that ground bar out to that ground rod, out to those ground rods. And that's where sh shorts and spikes and everything like that dissipates. And if the one thing is not hooked up, then and something grounds out or shorts out, and there's no ground, electricity takes the first path to ground. So rather than going back to the panel and getting out on that ground rod, it could go to the TV or the washer or something like that. And that's why the most important thing is the ground. Always, always make sure that your device or your equipment is grounded. Called a single game cutting box. <coughs> And the difference between this is, is you don't nail it in. Let's just say that somebody wanted to add a switch or an outlet or some kind of electrical gizmo on this wall, and we would cut this in between the studs, and it would attach to the drywall. So I would take this the height that I want it. Of course, I would level it, and I would cut around it. I mean, mark around it, and I would cut that hole. And then what happens is, as I turn this screw, these wings pop up, and they hook onto the back of the drywall. And when you tighten it, it tightens up against the drywall, it stays there, and that's what they consider a cutting box. And of course you drop down the wall, whatever you're gonna do, and make that work. All right, in the standard industry, especially in a residential house, when you have it, because basically when you go in, you cut all your boxes in, you drill all your holes, and then you run on your wire, you make all your joints, and then they hang the drywall over the top. You hang all your boxes, you drill all your holes, you run on your wire, and then your, the inspection would come in, the inspector would come in and you get your rough inspection. And that says everything is legal, copacetic, and to code. And the inspector says it's safe to drywall and cover everything up. And they cover everything up, and then we would put all our devices in, hang all our lights, put all our outlets in, and that would be the final. What we would be doing is trimming out the house, or trimming out whatever it is that we're doing, and then we would get our final inspection. And they, then the inspector would say, if we're so lucky to have power, he would check it. If not, he would say, it looks okay to turn the power on. It's safe. You can go ahead and do it. And then they would give us our final when we finished the electric, and they would move on from there. Now, one thing that is important that he's drawing is to hit the center of the stud. You want to be in the center of the stud because there's what we call an inch and a quarter rule in electrical, especially on wood framing. Simple reason being, once drywall is put on and they drill this way here to drill your drywall on, most of these are one inch screws, nothing gets worse. Now, if you don't hit the center of the stud when you're drilling the hole, they make a thing called a nail plate, which is a protector and it would have to be 
let's say you're an inch on this side, an inch and three quarters on this side. The side that has the one inch, you'd have to put a nail plate on. What that does, so when the drywall guy comes to screw in the drywall, he hits that metal thing, he can't go on and the screw, won't drill it, because he's not hitting wood. That's a nail plate. Another name for it's a kick plate. So we cover that over the top, and you can see it's got spikes on it. And you bang that in right there. So that way when they come by with the drywall screw, and drywallers don't care, they're just gonna, they just, they wanna get done so they can get that drywall, and then they're gonna drill through. And you will actually fail inspection if you don't have that clearance. Because one drywall screw can ruin your day. Because there's <laughs> nothing worse, and I've been through it many, many times, nothing worse than having the house all done, homeowners are getting ready to move in, and you're wondering why the whole back room doesn't work. And how do you prove that the drywaller drilled through the hole after it's all, you see any drywall screws in that wall? They're all done, they're patched up, it doesn't look like that, so guess, guess who gets stuck holding the bag trying to fix it? If you just put that one nail plate on where they, the screw couldn't reach, you'd have been safe. Companies are gonna provide you with protective gear. They're gonna provide you with gloves. They put you up in a high situation, they're gonna provide you with safety belts. They're gonna put you in a situation where you're gonna be drilling things and cutting things and using um, pieces of equipment. They're going to provide you with safety glasses. They're going to provide you with this equipment. It's up to you to protect yourself. That's why it's called personal protective gear. And that's it. We've all had something in our eye. God only gives you one pair of eyes. It's terrible. It's a terrible, terrible feeling. And uh, it's very important to make sure, I, like I said, I mentioned this before, these are my everyday glasses. If I cut, if I drill, if I do something, I always wear my safety glasses because Paul oh, is dead center. <coughs> that gives you an inch and a half, an inch and a, about an inch and a quarter on both sides. Mm -hmm. Not exactly. But, <laughs> I still have my clearance because you need an inch and a quarter. Because a drywall screw is an inch and a quarter. And usually if it's a half inch piece of drywall that if you ever see drywall and they try to do drywall, it's called setting the screw. It has to be dimpled in. So you can get real close. But then only if you don't have that inch and a quarter, that's when you're using the kick plate. Right. That or as we're coming down yeah, a concrete okay. block wall with just furring on the wall. Okay. You know, like for, your furring ship's three quarters of an inch. So you're bringing your wire down, you've got to notch or somehow get through that top furring. You've got to put it over top of it so it's protected. See, you can stand up and, and look. <laughs> well, I was going to turn. Okay. Let me just get the holes drilled. Yeah. Now, when we do a house, when we're drilling out a house, we use a larger drill, a quarter drill, instead of a, a handheld battery drill. Simple reason being, you'd be changing those batteries so often, whereas a quarter drill. It's a little bit more powerful and you want to change batteries. Now if you notice when he's drilling and he gets to the end, how it, he has to really push on it to get through, there's simple on an auger bit at the very tip of it is a, that looks like a screw. And that's called your worm and that's what helps pull you through the wood. Once you're through, it has nothing to pull on, so you got to <clears throat> The furring is a piece of wood. It's usually an inch and a half, inch and a quarter by three quarter inches thick, and they shoot it onto a concrete wall. Oh, that's it comes across the, the top. And, right, that's what they're holding the drywall onto the concrete wall. This is a different type of box. It's got a standoff bracket on the side of it. Maybe for some reason you got to either put it here, or maybe go a little bit further out, or maybe screw it to the stud. You never know what situation, weird situation you may be in. But every device, switch or an outlet, 
standard. You can see that these, these screws fit exactly perfect. And when you screw that in there, the wire's in there, and you hook that up, and your plate goes over the top of that. There's two little screws where the plate screws right there. And then, of course, the outlet has its own sink. But every, you notice that every screw fit perfect. Like I said, and this this uh, has the neutral and a ground and two circuits. The ground is when they say 12-3, it's the neutral and two hots. And we'll talk about the neutral in a little bit. If it's a 12-2, it would just be the neutral, the hot, and the ground. 12-2, neutral and the hot. This actually has two circuits in it. I brought in the two circuit one, so I figured instead of just using the 12-2, we can snip the one off and go from there. Because what I really like to do. this has the same thing and but the ground is insulated so because in a commercial situation in a commercial aspect your ground has to be insulated because it's in the commercial you have a ground ding conductor and then the neutral is considered the ground dead conductor and then you have non-grounded conductors which are the hops non-grounded conductors and like I said uh, the neutral can get a little confusing. We'll get on with that in a little bit. Neutral is always white? Color-wise? In a low-voltage situation, yes. In a high-voltage, 120-240 is uh, white. In 277-480, the neutral is gray. But it, you could run across it. Yes, and like I said, it's basically the same thing except it comes into a 3 8 jacket, which is a flex jacket. And you, this is, you can actually run this in a commercial situation. You can't run this in a commercial building because this is a, a residential type of wire. So, usually with 30 amps. And that would be your 10 wire, and that's orange. You step up from there, depending on the grade of what you're using, there's different. Once you get up into 8 gauge wire, which are your ranges, some heat units, um, some AC units, they're all different. There's black, there's gray, there's white, there's, but your standard 14s are white, 12s are yellow, 10s are orange. And then MB. And MB is just a, means non-metallic base. Non-metallic base means that the jacket covered your internal coils is non-metallic. Now you see how he's putting that in the box. If you, you have one more box. Okay, if you look inside this box right here, he's putting the wires in these what we call cutout or divot points. And as you push it in, sometimes you have to break it. Now, you don't want to open it any more than that. Some reason being, when you put your wire in, what that's doing, once it sits, you can't pull it out. And that's what it's for. It's called a type of Romex base connector. <coughs> now, when I'm handing Vinny now are what we call Romex staples. And that's to hold your wires in place. It is not to, when you drive a, uh, drive a staple over your, con, your, your uh, NMB or Romex, it is there to hold the wire in place. You don't want to crush it. Simple reason being, if you crush it too much, you can cross lines, you can crush the ground against the hot, 
and internally rupture the wire that was sheathing on the wire. when you, you're taking your <coughs> excuse me, Romex and you're bending it. You don't go pink and do a real sharp 90 on it. What that's considered a, in the electrical term is called a hot point and it's the easiest way or the cleanest way. Bending that sharp of a 90, once again your sheathing becomes compromised and that can also cause a short. That's why it's called a hot point. guys also you guys can see that I made an effort to kind of keep it somewhat aesthetically pleasing kind of make it straight I don't just drill my holes I measure my holes to keep them all straight because you know it says in the code book craftsman like manner and that is code they expect you to work as a professional not just slapping a bunch of wires in and you got to remember you're gonna have a man coming in there that's going to judge your work and this guy's going to be leaving the last guy and who knows what he ran into Consist consistently sees that you're making an effort to do a nice job he's going to work with you and that's the inspector box or a smoke detector but you can see the difference you can really see you, know, you can really see the emphasis on the lip and that's very important because you don't think it's a big deal and then you're making that extra second there. But here we go. Drywall's up, and your box is sticking out of the wall. And now you're going to put your fixture on there, which is fixture meaning light or device. Let's just use this as an example. And instead of being nice and flush on the drywall, There's a box sticking out of the wall. So guess what? Now your box is sticking out of the wall, your light's sticking out of the wall, and they can actually see the box. What do you think the owner's going to say? <laughs> what the heck is that crap? And uh, you got to remember, that's why I, I personally like to use deeper boxes. Because let's say you're putting this in. This is a GFI outlet. That's pretty thick. Some of these shallow boxes are going to be making up all these wire nuts in there. You want to have enough room to tuck everything back and make sure you have enough room <coughs> to put your outlet in. You got all that room in the back, tuck all those wires back. And that's very important because, especially later on down the line, you never know what the homeowner is going to do and they're going to be jamming stuff in there. And, you know, the really the cost difference. <coughs> Is really not that that much of a difference in a situation like that, especially when you got that two or three. That all right, you ran all your wires, all the boxes are. Here we go. We got power coming in. There's the power coming in, feeding the outlet. Outlet comes over, comes over, feeds the switch, and then the switch feeds the light. But of course. The switch is the break in the wire, which turns that light on and off, which in a minute I'll explain to you guys. Now, it's time to start cutting everything in. And uh, everybody's got their own way. The standard way is basically cut. So in an electrical situation, what is the one thing that always ties together and goes back to one source? I mentioned that at the beginning of the class. Ground. The ground, yes. All grounds tie together. It's one continuous base. You want that ground to pass in and out. You want that ground that you want to ground out every device, 
That way when you plug something in, your equipment has that ground and that ground goes back. This is a green wire nut. Green meaning ground. This is a standard color for green. And it's got a hole in it. This is good for residential only. So, if I want to put my one switch here, I need one ground. I would cut. When I do my grounds, I put, take my wires first and foremost. I got left and right. I cross my left and right, and I twist four times. And I go through. These are my clients on the side. Cut it tight. Turn it one more time to make sure it's tight. And I take my green wire nut. Green wire nut. The reason the hole's there. Okay? Goes right through. Goes all the way down. Once you hit your wires here, you twist. And my father used to say, twist it till it talks to you. And you'll feel here, it goes, eh. It means you're tight. But take that on the left hand side of the box for your ground. Alright? That's how I do it like that. That's set. Unless it's yours. Okay. So now, another thing is, you don't want to just start making, making the wires up. Make a nice clean joint. You want to make sure that your wires are untangled. See how they kind of layer? I got my black, got my white, got my red. They're not, you know, because when it comes time to tuck that back, you know, and if they're all twisted, it makes it look like you know what you're doing. You make actually made an effort. But for this situation, remember that I said there's going to be two circuits, and I'm not going to really use my red, and I'm going to it's I'm going to end up here with this extra red that's not going to be touching, I'm passing it through. So what I'm going to do is. Make my six inches. Cut it. I'm going to strip it. In each, if you look at your strippers, which I'm very blind, there's numbers on there. And it gives you the size. This one goes up to a size 12. I want to do three so I can kind of show you. Now, of course, in a situation when you're making up, you never want to touch the copper with your finger. That's kind of the idea of that way, you know, you kind of won't get shocked. Even if it's dead, just kind of work that. So you notice what I do is I make sure that all my insulations are even. I don't care how long the copper is. I make sure all my insulations are even. Grab. Give it a nice twist. Twist and pull. Right. And it's a little harder because it's not locked down in the box, so if it's locked down, it'll be tighter. Then you want your joint, you want that copper to be about the width of your clot. So one more little, and there you go. It's a nice tight industry joint. Now that wire nut, right on the bag of wire nuts, which I don't have a full bag, I can bring one in. It'll tell you. A yellow is good for 312s or 212s and a 14 or a yellow is good for 312s. And it tights down on there. Bites down nice and perfect. <coughs> so that one back. What I like to do is, when folding the box, what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to push this first into the corner. And what's happening is I'm doing this. So the wire's coming out of the hole in the top corner. I'm pushing it back like that, and then I want to fold the wire in. So when I push that wire in, all the way in the back, out of the way. And that's basically what you're looking at inside that box. 
Then the white, which is the neutral. Okay. In wiring, you have your bare copper. Your bare copper is your grounded conductor. All the way through, they're all connected. They go out and they go into the ground and a ground rod. Okay. Now, your neutral is your grounding conductor. I know it's really confusing, but what that does is that's completing your circuit. So it's hard to explain. You'd have to, have to draw a diagram showing how wire travels. Do you understand negative and positive on a battery? And yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Negative, let's just say you need the negative and the positive to make the light come on, correct? Okay, so the negative is not really the ground. The frame is the ground. The battery is the negative. You kind of understand that? Okay, so I could spend two and a half hours going over the neutral, or I could spend the time and just move on with that. So just understand the neutral completes the circuit. So I, but you don't want it to touch the hot wire because you know what would happen if you took a negative and positive and touched it together. What happened? Okay. <laughs> Now imagine that in a larger application. Okay, so let's move on. So, you'll see as you get, want to get into the field and you start working, you'll find tools that you feel more comfortable using. That's what Vinny keeps saying to us. I'm not used to these strippers. We, ours are longer. We have longer handles. And it's just more comfortable to work with. These are very nice. I would like to get these. When I started out, we didn't get strippers. Okay. There's a reason why I'm not used to strippers. Towards the end of the class, I'll explain to you. Okay, so here's what we got going on here. Do I have a switch here somewhere? Okay. Let's forget about the red. Red doesn't exist. Okay? All we got is the black. Right? Now, <coughs> here, we have a brass screw and a silver screw. Okay? The brass screw is the hot conductor, which is usually the color. Could be the red, but we're not talking about the red right now. And this is the silver screw, which is the neutral. Okay? Now the neutral basically comes from the source, passes all the way through, and comes over. This, by the way, I'm making up a switch, just so you know. So the black comes from the source, comes all the way through, comes in and out of the outlet, which is still hot, comes over here, and then you got your power coming into the switch. Now it's now we come over to here, which I'll show you, and I take my silver screw and I put my white wire, and I take my brass screw and I put my black wire. I have my hot and my neutral, which will now feed my, my light. Now if I take these two wires, and they're hot, one's hot and one's going to the light. If I touch them together, what's going to happen? Light's going to go on. If I take it apart, what's going to happen? Light's going to come on. Guess what that is? Switch. Okay? I'm breaking the source. Okay? Power's coming in. I fed the outlet in and out. It stays hot because you want your outlets to stay hot. There are switched outlets in some situations. We won't talk about that right now because we're not talking about that. They come in and out. They come from over here. Come up. Here's the hot. Hot goes on one side. Hot goes to the other, switch is on. What's going to happen? Light. Light's going to come on. I'm breaking the source. Okay? So, what I would do is, I'm sorry, I think I got a hook, right? So now, I think it's semi long. So now it really, to be honest with you, it doesn't matter 
It's just breaking the source, which screw in this situation, the in and out, doesn't really matter. Standard industry, hot, and a disconnect, which a disconnect is a disconnect that turns off the building, or a disconnect is this is considered a disconnect, correct? Because it's disconnecting the power. The hot should go on top. That's kind of standard industry. So for that application, this is around here, it's right there. we're going to do that. We're going to put the hot on top. Sometimes there's two. You can take two hots put in and one switch stay out. You're then using the device as a junction. Most electricians will not do that. Back in the day, we used to do it when we were on 14 wires. We're still, we're still allowed right now, but probably in the very near future, the code will change and they will stop all stabs altogether. Which I'm hoping that they do. Yes. And I also don't agree with the fact that. Sorry, I just went off on the tangent. Okay, so. Of course, another thing is righty tidy lefty loosey. Everybody know that one? Yes. <laughs> righty tidy lefty loosey. Yeah. Well, the reason he says that is when you have your screw, sorry. you want your wire to follow with your screw when you're turning it because that will help tighten. If you put it backwards and you're tightening in, a lot of times that wire will just come right off the screw. So when I hook it, I want to hook it that way, clockwise, right? Clockwise. So when I tighten it, it tightens it more. And then, of course, you want to make sure, look at your product, and make sure that the on is on the bottom and the off is on the top. So the switch doesn't say, like, no and boo. You look know, foolish. Because when they're walking through and the owner is walking through with the homeowner, and you got to think, the homeowner comes in, or the guy that's building these houses that comes in, he may be looking at you guys and giving your boss the opportunity to do the first one. But in his pocket, he may have another 25, 30, or 1,000 houses that he's trying to find a good electrician that's gonna make that extra effort. Make that extra effort to make sure that those boxes are straight. He cleans up after himself. They do well, make sure that the wires are nice. They pass inspection the first time. Little things happen. We fail inspections from here and there. It happens, but for the most part, what I want to do is I you got to think <coughs> an accordion. So I have my device here, right? So what I want to do is I want to bend the wire. I want to bend the wire, and there's the device. So when I push it back, I got this going on. So it's nice and tough. You see how my wires are all nice and tough in the back? I got plenty of room back there. Now the wires seem to be on top, so I push my wire up. Bend my wire again, tuck my wire back, screw my switch in. Guys, when you're twisting, when you're stripping wire, I see a lot of this. Okay, hold on to your wire. For the most part, you kind of want to grab that wire. God, I'm so blind. Right? See where my thumb is? I'm pushing my thumb. Against the wire, which didn't work. Okay. Oh, these are 14. That's um, so, I'm holding my strippers, I got the wire in my hand, and I take my thumb and I push. And I strip the wire. Take the wire, I take it, I strip, and I push. You don't want to pull, you want to stay on it. 